Good evening, good evening, good evening. I want to say God bless you, God bless you. I want to thank everybody that's listening in on this video broadcast tonight. What a wonderful Wednesday night we're having. Hey, man, some strange weather for for wintertime. It's, hey, it's already feel like spring, but we thank God for another day and another opportunity just to broadcast to the people around the world and those here in the, the nation of America. We say good evening and God bless each and every one of you, and we pray that you have had a a prosperous day, a blessed day today. Tonight it is Restoring Souls to Christ radio show with your radio host, Pastor Brenda D. Wilson, every Wednesday night, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time and 7 o'clock Central. So right now we're going to give the woman of God a hand clap and she will bring us a word from the Lord. God, I give you glory on tonight, God. I give you praise. I honor you tonight, God, for you are worthy 
to be praised. Welcome to the Restoring Souls Back to Christ broadcast. I am your host for this evening, Pastor Brenda D. Wilson of Duncanville, Texas. Before we start our program on tonight, let's go to the throne of grace. Father God, in the name of Jesus, on tonight, God, we come to you, thanking you and praising you for all that you've done all day long, how you have kept us safe from hurt, harm, and danger. And Lord, I pray that it be none of me and all of you that uh, bring forth this word on tonight to your people. And Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. I thank God on tonight. I praise him on tonight for being with you again. God is so good and he's so worthy to be praised. I magnify his name tonight. I have a spirit of great expectation for the people of God. And on tonight, the scripture lesson will be coming from Jonah, the first chapter, beginning at the first verse. And it reads as follows. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid a fare thereof, and went down into it, to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea, to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay, and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him, and said unto him, what meanest thou, O sleeper? Or why arise and call upon thy God? If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said every one to his fellow, fellow, Come and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Glory to God. On tonight. I want to give you a thought concerning, can you hear me now? Are you listening? May I have your attention, please. In this uh, passage of scripture, we see that God has given Jonah a command to go and tell, warn a city of their sin and their wickedness and it, because it has come up before him strongly. And Jonah... Um, didn't want to go. He he wanted. He was rebellious. So he called himself fleeing from the presence of the Lord. And in my in my mind, I say this was his biggest first mistake because everywhere you go, God's presence is there. God is going to be wherever you are. So you can't hide from God. Glory to God. So Jonah Jonah tried to get on the ship and hide. So he he. He went the opposite way. God told him to go to Nineveh. He got on the ship going to Tartarus. And so he got on the ship and he went down below and he went to sleep. He went to sleep. And all of a sudden there came a storm on the ocean. And the, and the boat began to re reel and rock and be tossed to and fro. And the people on the, at the top of the ship was becoming to get weary. And, and you all know the story. They began to get weary and they wanted to know what the cause was that they were, that they were in this trouble. So they went down and they found Jonah and they asked him, uh, told him to wake up, you sleeper, and, and call upon your God so we can know what's going on. S see why this, this storm has arose and our ship is in danger and our lives are in danger that we might perish. Get up and call on your God. Glory to God. And so Jonah got up and they, they all gathered together and they began to cast what they call casting lots. So there was like out, out in my mind is the modern, the older day um, version of, of shooting dice to, to see which one is going to fall on. So it ended up being on Jonah. It, it led to Jonah. So as they did that and it fell on Jonah, uh, they asked, well, what can we do with you? So all of this hell will, will, will stop going up for us and that we might not perish. And Jonah said, toss me overboard. Just 
just tossed me overboard. Well, they tossed him overboard. And when Jonah was tossed overboard, God had prepared a fish. And we're going to say this fish because I've heard all of my life that this fish was a whale. And so God allowed the swell to swallow Jonah up. And he was in the belly of this fish before he even thought about obeying God. So he was in there three, I, I would say three days. And I can imagine in that belly of that, of that whale that he was going through his own personal hell. He tried to flee from the voice of God. But everywhere he went, God was there. And I imagine God was whispering in Jonah's ear after he went through these trials and tests in this, the belly of the whale, saying, do I have your attention now? May I have your attention, please? Can you hear me now? Are you listening? What else have I got to do to prove to you that you're going to do what I command you to do or you're going to suffer the consequences? Can you hear God now? Are you listening? Can he get, his, get your attention, please? And, and God let, I believe God let uh, Jonah know when I command you to do a thing one way and you try to do it your own way, it's going to turn into a disaster and you'll still have to call on me. And my question to you, I can imagine God will be saying to us and he's saying to us today, may I have your attention, please? Can you hear me now? Are you listening? When I show you on a daily basis that lo, I'll be with you always, and you trust everybody and everything except me, and it doesn't go the way you plan, and you still have to call on me? What else needs to happen? Can you hear me now? Do I have your attention? Are you listening? When you lose a loved one and things seem hopeless, I try to tell you I am your hope. I am your comforter. I am your friend in the midnight hour, and you don't want to listen. You don't want to receive me. Instead, you may turn to alcohol or drugs, or all different types of, of sin to make you feel better. And they don't. They just make you feel worse. And when you come to yourself and realize it was me you needed all the time, my question will still be to you. May I have your attention, please? Can you hear me now? Are you listening? And I, I would imagine in my mind today, I'm, I'm looking at, the all types of weather that we're having. We're having one storm right behind the other. Uh, floods and, and, and earthquakes and tsunamis and whatever is going on. God, I believe God is saying to his people today, can you hear me now? Are you listening? May I have your attention, please? I, I, I don't want to keep allowing things to happen. Before you will cry out to me, or be, before you were listening to, before you were listen to me, or hearkening to my voice. But when things happen, all I'm trying to do is get your attention to let you know that I don't care. I do not care what you try. You're gonna have to come back to me. So, so when things happen, when you lose someone, or you lose your job, or you lose your health, God wanna know. Is that what it's going to take for you to hear him? Is that what it's going to take for us to listen to him? Is that what it's going to take for him to have our attention? Glory to God. Glory to God. I, 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 I see here in today's scripture that Jonah was commissioned to go to a city called Nineveh and warn the people about their wickedness as I forestated. And he didn't want to go just like some of us when God tells us, to deliver word or go somewhere out of our comfort zone. We, we buck against him and, and sometimes he will allow us to go on our own way and create our own mess and then he'll ask us in his own fatherly way. Do I have your attention now? You see what takes place when you don't obey me. You see what happens when you go in your own way. You see what happens when you don't listen to my word and don't obey my word because in my word I told you to trust in me with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge me and I will direct your path but but you're so stubborn and stiff necked and hard headed and want to go into your own way so I allow things to take place I allow Satan to to stir up a harness nest under you, stir up a fire under you, 
And I want to know, is that what it's going to take for you to hear me, for you to listen, and for me to get your attention? Glory to God. God is, is warning us on tonight. He's letting us know that these storms and this weather, you can't tell the summer from the spring, from the fall, from the winter. You can't tell the, the, the seasons apart. He's letting us know he's on his way back. He want to know. Could he have our attention? Everything else has our attention. Everybody else has our attention. And, and in our giving our attention to somebody or something else, we get our hearts broken. We get disappointed in life. We go through things that sometimes we don't even have to go through. But God want to know, what is it going to take, America? What is it going to take? my people that are called by my name? What is it going to take men and women of God? What is it going to take for me to have your attention, for you to hear me, for you to listen and come back to me? Glory to God. I'm giving you chance after chance after chance after chance because I love you and I don't want to see you suffer. I don't want to see you out on the street. I don't want to see you hungry. I don't want to see that. But because of disobedience sometimes, I allow these things to happen, to get your attention, to make you listen, to make you, to, to make you hear me. I love you. I want the best for you. But I need you to obey me when I tell you to do something. Obey me when I tell you to go somewhere. Obey me when I tell you to be still and know that I am God. Can I have your attention, please? Glory to God. Time is winding up. The word of God declares that the end of all things is at hand. People of God, people of the world, whoever is listening to this broadcast, God wants your attention. Sometimes he has allowed us to have uh, things, material things, and we get caught up and, and make that our God, or we'll make our homes our God, or we'll, we'll make our children our God, and we'll listen to them quicker than we will God himself. So he's saying, I'm allowing certain things to come upon the earth to affect you because you're not listening. You're not hearing my call. I'm calling, I'm pleading, come back to me. My arms are wide open. I'm waiting for you. Can I have your attention, please? Can you hear me now? When that loved one that you were so close to slowly slips into eternity, don't turn against me. Turn to me because I am your hope. I am your hope against uh, depression. I am your hope against uh, grieving for a lot for the rest of your life. Can you hear me, please? Are you listening? May I have your attention? Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, God. Glory to God. So, so people of God, I beseech you that we hearken to the voice of, of the Lord and do it His way and not ours. Glory to God. Every time God tells us to go right and we go left. Every time God tells us to shut our mouth and we keep on talking. Now, I'm talking to me first. I always let you know that I'm speaking to Brenda first because I am the first partaker of his word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, so tonight, I want you to know that God loves you. He loves you with an unconditional love. And he tells us in his word that nothing can separate us from his love, but he wants us to obey him. Don't go through unnecessary trials and tribulations. Don't go through unnecessary pain. Some things you bring on yourself for disobedience. So, so may I have your attention, please? Can you hear me now? Glory to God. Are you listening? Do you hear my still, small voice say, come, come, come unto me, all of you that labor 
and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Glory to God. Not the way man wants us to do it, but his way. And at the end of the day, we can say with a clear heart, a clear conscience, and a humble heart, yes, Lord, I hear you. Yes, Lord, I'm listening. Yes, Lord, you have my attention. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want you to be encouraged on tonight, people. I want you to know that God loves you. I, I can't say that enough because God is love. Glory to God. Glory to God. And he wants us to humble ourselves and turn from our wicked ways and seek his face. Glory to God. Seek his face. Hear him. Give him your undivided attention so that you may not have to go through certain things unnecessarily. Now, now I'm not saying that you're not going to have trials and tribulations. That, that's life. You're going to have it. But some things you may not have to go through as strong if you hearken unto the voice of the Lord, if you listen to him, if you if you give him your undivided attention, glory to God. He won't fail you. He won't fail you. Man will fail you, but God will never fail you. So, so don't be discouraged and be not dis dismayed because the Lord our God will be with you in all that he tells you to do. Saints, let's not let a tragedy have to, to strike or we have to go through our own belly of the fish or our own personal hell before we hear God and obey. So on tonight, I, I praise God. I magnify his name. I thank him for his word. He warns us because his, his word lets us know whom he loveth, he chastened. Glory to God. And sometimes, I, I believe this with all my heart, when I was a child, when I disobeyed my parents, I got a spanking. It didn't feel good at the time. I, I didn't like how my mama spanked me or how she scolded me but I've I learned in years since that she did it because she loved me she wanted to get my attention she didn't want me to go through some of the stuff that maybe she went through at my age so God is saying listen give me your undivided attention don't give everybody and everything else. I'm not saying don't enjoy the things that God has provided for us because he wants us to enjoy everything that he's provided for us because the word lets us know that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Everything in this world belongs to him. But sin, our sins have caused us again to be separated from him. So let's come back to him in the fullness of heart. Let's love him with all our heart all of our soul, all of our mind, because he's saying in this weather, all this disaster, just like uh, one storm right behind the other, Florence, and then then uh, Michael, and all of these just turn up places, letting you know that material things can't save you. You can stay in that house trying to weather that storm, but that storm can take you and this house, that house away from here. It's not worth it, especially if our soul's not right. So God is saying, may I have your attention, please, when the storms come. May I have your attention, please, when the floods come. May I have your attention, please, when what you love and treasure so much is destroyed and taken from you. May I have your attention, please. Can you hear me now? Are you listening? people of God, let's take heed. The end of all things is at hand. Time is winding up and we got to get ready and we got to stay ready. It's no time to play games with serving God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. That's my heart's desire is to live what I preach to you about. So God wants us to hear him. He wants us to listen and he wants us to obey. Glory to God. I pray that you receive something out of this word. I pray that it blessed you. 
I, it, it touched me first because a lot of times I can be hard headed. And when God is telling me something because it don't feel good to my natural body, I don't I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to receive it. And if he tells me that this one is going to be out of my life and that one is going to be out of my life and he's going to bring new and different people in my life because that's out of my comfort zone. I wiggle in the mold and I take myself through unnecessary pain sometimes. So I'm saying this to you from experience. We need to hearken unto the voice of the Lord and obey him because he loves us. And he's just trying to get our attention. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want to let you know that I pray in my heart and in my spirit that God will bless your heart, that he would tug on your heartstring. And if you're not, uh, have not received Jesus as your personal savior, that you will repent and be godly sorry for your sins and call on the name of the Lord and ask him to come into your heart to transform your mind, renew and transform your mind. Glory to God, that you may serve him until your dying days. And this I pray for every one of you with the love of the Lord in my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. I thank you for joining us on tonight. And I pray that uh, on next Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 Central Time, that you will join us again here at Restoration uh, I'm sorry, at Restoring Souls Back to Christ broadcast. Glory to God. And I pray that if you want to keep in contact with us, that you would give us a call at 919-391-6250. Again, that number is 919-391-6250. Glory to God. Or if you want to send us an email, we'll be glad to hear from you at restoration, C-O-N-F, M-I-N dot love at yahoo dot com. Glory to God. I, I, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Um, I love you with the love of the Lord. And I want to give um, thanks to our sponsor, CT Management Solutions out of uh, Newport News, Virginia. Glory to God. That has been so faithful with us and for us. Glory to God. I thank God for the uh, manager of this company. Uh, the number is 757-272-4885. The number for CT Management Solution in Newport, again, is 757-272-4885. Glory to God. And I also, uh, once again, would like to give thanks to uh, Pastor Neil and the TMA radio broadcast for allowing us this time to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And until next time, good night and God bless. Amen. You have been listening to Pastor Brenda D. Wilson. What an awesome word on this evening to encourage your heart. Regardless of what you got going on in your life, whatever problems, whatever sickness, whatever issue. Whatever you're lacking, I want you to know today that God is able. He's a way maker. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. And he will change your very mind, your very heart. He will watch out for your family. He will put food on your family's table. He will put clothes on their back. He will open up a door that no man can open and no man can shut. And that's the God we serve. So tonight we want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, to keep on pushing, keep on trying. And know that God is our answer to all things. He's a problem solver. Amen. Whatever problem you got, he's the answer to it. Amen. We think again, the Restoring Souls to Christ radio show every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time and at 7 o'clock Central Time. And coming up at 9 o'clock, we will be back again on the Men to Men Talk Up, the Talk Up show with your radio host, Pastor Nino Ackridge and co-host, Pastor Carl Young. And tonight, amen, going to be a great conversation, a great, great conversation, a special edition tonight on the Men to Men Talk Back Talk Up Show. 
how toxic people can ruin your life, dreams, and goals. Then we have talking about the divided, the divide in America deepens. Then we're gonna hit on the new facial recognition software and how it may take away our personal privacy. So we're gonna be hitting it all tonight. We're gonna be hitting it all tonight, but we're gonna start off with how toxic people can ruin your life, your dreams, and go. Coming up at nine o'clock on the Men to Men Talk Up show. All right, God bless you. Meet us back here, Restoring Souls to Christ, next Wednesday night. God bless you. <laughs>